This week, I went and observed my first IDPA, which stands for International Defensive Pistol Association, shooting competition, and it was a bunch of fun. Really great time watching it. I can't wait to be participating in it, and that's going to be coming up soon. But the report of this week's event is coming up right now. Stay tuned. Hey folks, and welcome to 22 millimeter short Thursdays on Get on Target with Link. Uh, today we're going to be talking about IDPA and getting involved in that. I'm really looking forward to getting started with it. But before I get to that, I just want to say thank you because you made that happen. I really appreciate it. 100 subscribers. We passed that uh, milestone this week. And uh, onward and upward, let's keep going and growing. Um, I hope you're having fun with this. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. When the bell notification bell comes up, just bing, ring it. You'll be uh, kept informed of what's coming up new and soon. So spread the word, share it with other friends, let them know that there's a place to come and learn about pistols and shooting and all for beginners and all with no politics. Just a fun place to talk about shooting. So anyway, this week, 22 millimeters short is supposed to be about what I've got going on in my head about shooting and, uh, and what happened in my shooting week. And this week was really pretty special for me. I went to my first competition, uh, IDPA shooting competition. International Defensive Pistol Association is a pretty big organization. They have national and international competitions, but you also have tons and tons of competitions at the local level, and that's what I went to uh, here. I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and the Colonial Shooting Academy uh, hosts an IDPA event every single Monday night, and they it's wonderful. It's a, it's a group of people that just really enjoy shooting and uh, honing their skills and trying to make themselves better. Um, good group of people. They all seem to uh, really have a great camaraderie at the place. Some things that absolutely stood out to me. There were people that were young. There were people that were old. There were white and black. There were women and men. It was everybody was there, all with the same interest, shooting and just challenging their skills against a consistent opposition, which is the uh, stages of the competition. A lot of fun. I was also really impressed with the fact that not everybody was some expert marksman. There were some great people there to watch and learn from. Pretty impressive shooting that I saw that night. Um, but there were also people that were just there, just trying to do their best. Um, they weren't going to be competitive. They weren't going to win the match. That wasn't going to happen. Didn't matter. It was just a challenge. It's like golf. You put most of us, you know, first we, if we break a hundred, we're excited. That's, that's a great day. Then if you get past 90, it's another great day, but you're not challenging yourself against others with those numbers. It's a challenge against yourself and getting better and better and better and just becoming the best you can be. Fantastic. And that was the, that was the attitude at the place and uh, the people that ran it were just really congenial, really welcoming. I came in there asking if I could simply observe it and take some video, uh, which not everybody is down for. They, were, they announced it to everybody, asked everybody there if they were okay with it. If they were okay with it, then the, uh, the powers that be were okay with it. And everybody said okay, with the exception of one woman who didn't want to be filmed, and I respected that. But it was fantastic. Just, yeah, come on in. Look at what we're doing. Take a, take a peek. Hope you like it. And people were friendly, and it was just a... It was just a fun, a fun evening. So I'm looking forward to getting uh, involved in this. 
I have a couple of pieces of equipment that I have on order that are, uh, that are going to be needed for the competition. Um, but one of the great things about IDPA, there are several different um, shooting organizations that do competitions. Um, rivals in a sense, but they just, they all approach it a little bit differently. And the IDPA, one of the big advantages of it is that the equipment needs for it are very modest. Uh, you can get into it almost with what you have right at home. Uh, it's, not, it's not a big uh, um, acquisition that you're going to have to do in order to compete with IDPA. Uh, I got a thick, heavy belt from online from who knows where, but it was like 13 bucks, and it'll carry concrete blocks on it. It's super thick, heavy leather belt, and it's all you need. Um, I'm going to show you real quick some of the other equipment that's going to be necessary. But it's incredibly modest. It, it's just, there's just not a whole lot to it. Uh, and you'll be able to afford it. So, let's take a look at that. So folks, basically what you see here on the table in front of me, that's all you're going to need in order to compete in IDPA competitions. You'll need your eyes. Got to have eyes anytime you're shooting. Uh, that's just smart anyway. Got to have ears, because you're going to need to hear sometime down the road again. These were really important at the range uh, this week. Uh, without them, we're shooting indoors in a, in a basement range. <laughs> and the sound is loud in that confined space. So make sure you, you have to have your ears anyway. It's a requirement, but you need them down there. The other thing you're going to need is magazine carriers or magazine pouches, as they're called. These are going to go on your belt. Uh, you need at least two. Uh, three is fine. You can do up to three. Um, and probably not a bad idea to have the third one. You'll need magazines for all of those carriers. So you need three magazines to compete. Uh, and probably uh, not the dumbest idea to have a fourth one in case you have a failure of a magazine. Uh, during a competition, you'll have a backup. But three, you definitely need. You need three magazines for the weapon that, uh, that meets the IDPA requirements. Now, most weapons will meet some IDPA requirement. The, uh, there are different categories that you can shoot in, and most weapons are going to fit into one of those just fine. SSP is a uh, stock service pistol, that's most guns over the counter without any uh, uh, modifications. And that's what most of us will shoot to get started. This is one of the appeals of IDPA, is that the needs are not that specialized. You can get started with what you got. You can always build later and you can get more sophisticated later on. But this G2C is, is perfectly permissible and applicable for a starting out IDPA shooter. The G3 probably is even a little bit better with a longer barrel, better accuracy, but they're both 250 bucks, so pick one. Um, either one will work. Now, to go along with that weapon, you're going to need a holster. You got to have something to put it on your belt, so that's going to be required as well. There are rules about the holsters as well. Um, they can't hold your weapon way out from away from your body. They have to be, the whole concept of this is normal concealed carry operation. So everything that you have here is normal uh, types of equipment that could be potentially used for concealed carry. So you'll have to have a holster on your belt and you'll need a belt. Now, they make tactical belts, they make specialized belts that, are, that can go up to a hundred bucks. You don't need one. That is completely unnecessary. Uh, there are some tactical belts that are around the $30 range. Don't need that either. This is just a really, really thick, thick leather belt. I got it online for $13 and this holds my stuff perfectly well for my level of shooting at this stage of my game. It's all I need. You don't have. You probably have a belt that will suffice if, uh, for 
for what you're going to be carrying already in your wardrobe. You probably don't need a thing. Maybe you do. 13 bucks, I got something that's going to work for me. And that's all you need. You're all in. Well, not quite. One more thing. Okay, the other thing, that, the last thing you're going to need is a concealment garment. Now, I have this handy dandy vest that I got for the purpose. Uh, this was less than 30 bucks online. Uh, again, we'll leave links to this stuff down in the description. But you don't even need this. Uh, a Tommy Bahama shirt that you have in the closet that's long. That'll do it. All that has to happen is when you hold your arms out to the side, you cannot see the weapon dangling below the concealment garment and you can't see the magazines, both of which I'm wearing. So you've got my weapon here, magazines here, completely concealed, and when the buzzer goes off, your job is to draw. Okay, so that's emulating a concealed carry scenario, and this garment is part of that. It conceals the weapon and makes it a plausible scenario. So, all, half, well, a lot of this stuff you have because you're a shooter, eyes and ears, or because you're a human being, a belt and something long enough to conceal what you're wearing. The rest, you're going to probably already have two magazines. You might need to buy a third. The magazine pouches are going to be a very modest uh, uh, investment. $17, $18. You'll see the description. Uh, you'll see the link in the description below. I got four of them. Not a big deal. If one breaks, I have a backup. Awesome. Are they the best going in the world? Heck no. But I'm going. I'm in the game. And that's all we're trying to do right at the start. Just like you do not have to buy tailor-made uh, golf clubs when you have never swung a club. You don't need tactical waist belts and the most expensive $50 mag pouches in order to start your journey in IDPA competition. Get in the game. The first thing that happens at the competition all of the competitors get together and are taken through the individual stages and shown what is required of them in that particular stage. Uh, the officer in charge there will tell you what sh targets need to be acquired, how many shots per target, uh, whether you can be sitting or standing, um, all of the different specifics and parameters of the particular stage that you're about to shoot. So you'll go through a, an orientation of each of the stages that you're going to compete in. This competition had three stages. One was sitting and had four targets, you know, pretty much directly in front of you, two shots per target. The second stage had three positions that you would go to First position had one target, the second position had two targets, and the third position had three targets, uh, each one getting two shots. The last one was a four, basically four locations. You'd stop at one location, have three shots on one target. Moving across, you would have two targets that you would uh, be able to uh, acquire during the motion across the field. You'd get to a final position and you'd have two targets uh, that you would acquire there. Each target required three shots. Um, these were unlimited shots, so what that means is you can take as many shots as you need to to get the score on the target that you wanted, but the mitigating factor to that is that time is of the essence as well. So it's a combination of accuracy and time. So if you take a lot of time shooting a whole bunch of shots at one target, you're eating up time on the clock and that's going to affect your overall score. So that's how it works. And uh, the explanation of the uh, individual stages was great. Uh, it made perfect sense. You had plenty of time to ask questions about it if, you, if anything wasn't clear. 
uh, and everybody was just super, super helpful. Uh, there were no questions too silly. Um, you, you felt very much at ease uh, getting clarity on what you were supposed to do. So that's how it started. The first stage looked like this. You were sitting and your weapon was in a box in front of you on the table, unloaded. What you had to do was open the box, load your weapon, and then take aim on each of four targets. The target with the hands, you have the two small squares on the left and right at the top of it. Those are two of the targets. The other targets were behind those. And two shots in each, all from a sitting position uh, for time. That's how that one worked. When done at speed, this is the way that stage looked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, done. This man was a very good shooter. Um, uh, obviously had a great deal of experience um, and his accuracy was pretty phenomenal. Um, when you're shooting at the targets, there's a certain area of the target that you need to hit in order to get what's called down zero. Down zero means that you hit within the range of the target that you were supposed to, uh, to hit. Outside of that, there are additional points in seconds added to your score outside of those target zones. So this was a down zero uh, stage for this man. All of his rounds were in the proper target area and he did it extremely fast. That's the way we all aspire to do it. The second stage of the competition started the same way, but being seated with your unloaded weapon in a box in front of you. You'd get the box open, load your weapon, go to your first shooting spot, and you'd have one target to shoot at, two shots. You'd go to your second uh, target position, you'd have two targets to shoot at there, two shots apiece. And then you'd go down that little hallway, and there are three more targets down there, two shots apiece, and that's the stage. So in total, you're looking at two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve shots. That means that you do have one reload because you can only have ten rounds in your weapon, uh, uh, in your magazine, and you are going to be required to do a magazine change during the stage. So that's part of the skill set that you're developing. And that was stage two. Stage three looked like this. From a starting position um, where you, uh, I believe you, yes, you had to draw your weapon. From the first position you had three shots. Then in movement you had one, two targets, three shots apiece. Then you moved to your final location and you had three shots straight down range and then one cross the range and that's the longest shot of the competition. Uh, this was a very, very fast uh, stage for this gentleman and if I remember correctly this was another down zero stage not positive of that but I think it was those were the three stages of the match uh, the cumulative total is going to determine your ranking you don't find out the ranking that night it's actually done uh, there there's some collation of all of that data uh, and your rankings are done online and you pick them up in a day or so uh, so, just a, a, a bunch of fun and a whole bunch of different um, uh, levels of skill on display, disparate people all coming together with a common interest. Kind of what I designed this channel to be about. That's why it's a non-political channel. It's just a place for us all to come and share the one thing that we share regardless of where else we disagree, and that's our love of shooting and shooting sports. Um, I hope this was fun to you. It was a lot of fun to me, and I'm anxious to get out there and give it a shot, so to speak. And I have no expectations of greatness. Um, I'm going to be that over 100 round golfer when I go out there, I'm quite sure. But what a challenge, and uh, puts a little bit of um, anxiety to the to the just the the normal looking down range and taking aim uh, which there is no anxiety to that 
This is designed, these individual stages are designed to represent tactical situations that you might encounter in the real world. That's the, that's the concept of IDPA, is that these stages represent possible scenarios that you may confront and trying to conf confront them uh, quickly, accurately. Uh, that's the whole, the whole concept of the sport. So that was uh, my introduction to IDPA, might be yours too. Um, as I go along, as I get involved in this and I, and I take, my, take my shot at, uh, at competing, I'm gonna take you along. Um, we'll be watching it from, from my eye view. Uh, hopefully I'll be bringing my GoPro along with me and we'll be able to take some shots of, uh, of the competition as I take, as I take my chances. And I hope you come along. Should be it should be fun. I think I'm probably a couple of, between two weeks and a month away uh, from my first competition. Um, they do it every Monday night. My schedule doesn't allow me to do it every Monday night, but it allows me to do it every other Monday night. Um, and I may not get to it this coming opportunity. It may be the following one. So it might be almost a month before I get to it, but it's coming, and I'll take you along with me. So. That's it for 22 millimeter short Thursday uh, this week. Hope it was fun. Um, maybe inspire you to, to take a chance. There's, no, there's nothing more at risk doing this than playing golf for the first time. Do it for the fun of it. Do it for the challenge, just for the, just for the sheer joy of taking it, you know, of winging it, going, going for it. Be safe, know the four, uh, rules of shooting safety, of gun safety, before you go anywhere near any range for any reason. But once you've got that down and you're a safe person to be around when there's a weapon in your hands, compete. Go for it. Give it a try. So if this was helpful, if you enjoyed it, like the video, share it with some friends, get them excited. Maybe you can go as a group and all compete together and compete against each other. Subscribe to the uh, to the channel. We're growing. Thank you. We're growing because of you. So subscribe, ring the bell. We'll let you know every Tuesday and Thursday something new is coming out. And until we see you the next time on Get on Target with Link, see ya.